The reasons why shorts are scared, how the CAT system is catching shorts, and why AMC short positions are short-lived are just a few of the many subjects that will be covered in this video. First, we'll examine how AMC theaters in the United States receive over 8.8 .8 million moviegoers from Wednesday through Sunday, a substantial volume during the Thanksgiving holiday. The reason we highlighted that AMC short positions cannot continue indefinitely is related to both total revenue and revenue from food and beverages. Since there are only two possible outcomes for short sellers, AMC going bankrupt or all retail investors selling their shares, we have already covered this news item to help you comprehend how AMC is obviously shattering records. Now, obviously, we know that the latter is nearly impossible, 99.99%, and the only thing that is more likely, in comparison, is for AMC to go bankrupt. However, given that AMC is breaking records, we know that they are making more money, so they have a lower chance of going bankrupt. This is what we discussed when we discussed how short positions can't last forever, because, as you can see, they believe they could hold on to their shares for longer than people can hold their long positions. To their surprise, however, people will never sell their shares. And those who have bought AMC since 2021 are still holding on to their shares as we enter 2025. The explanation for this is simple. Although we are all aware that maintaining AMC holdings doesn't cost us any money, short sellers do spend money on financing their short positions and starting new ones on a daily basis. On the other hand, individual investors only have to pay the money they spent to buy AMC. We don't have to pay anything else. We also talked about what could be done in the future with the issuance of dividends. And so at that point, not only will it cost us no money to hold on to our positions, but it will actually gain U.S. money to hold on to these positions because of dividends. And again, we talked about the effect of having dividends, how he making the shorts pay for that as well. And so these are exactly everything we've covered in terms of understanding how shorts can't hold forever, but the retail investors can. And you can also see this, they are so scared of AMC going over $5, and it shows entire movie industry, it's going bananas after the success of this weekend. And somehow the largest movie exhibitor with the largest market share isn't seen that reflected in the stock TikTok. And this is reflecting to what we talked about at the very start. Like I said, again, understanding that AMC is breaking records. Remember, AMC is the biggest company within this industry. They benefit the most from this. But the reason why you don't see it reflecting in the price is because what it does is that it doesn't benefit the institutions. It benefits the retail. And therefore, it's being suppressed if the AMC institutional ownership was actually the majority. So if it was actually 90% owned by institutions, we're definitely going to be seeing AMC making new all-time highs or at least we're going to see it being bigger than Cinemar, than IMAX. We talked about how AMC's naked short sellers and short sellers are completely screwed. The company is stronger than ever, and the stock price is unchanged. But the reason these stocks are hitting a 52-year high, and AMC is not, is very clear. I agree since, as 2025 draws near, we have to admit that the movie business is getting better, and even surpassing COVID in the previous year. AMC has a very strong chance of making money as a result. Recall that more than just ticket sales have experienced this. This phenomena has been shown, among other things, in food and beverage sales. We've also noticed that clothing has done well, especially for the movie Test Sui. We also know that AMC will screen the movie and has additional investments. As you can see above, all of these elements start to help AMC get better. Since Friday, November 29th was the company's highest total revenue and the second highest total revenue day in its history, we may conclude that AMC is improving. Since AMC would not be setting records and outperforming their previous performance if the box office were declining, we can be confident that they will continue to improve. Their activities show that the industry is doing well. Let's look at this. I think the company has taken all the necessary steps to ensure his future. And any short-sightedness is totally out of the question, given these Thanksgiving box office records. According to the EIT, AMC's business structure and its management structure, we will only see a rise in the box office, as we already indicated. Seller, which can be streamed right now, is selling out of seeds. We are aware of how AMC will profit from this and how they can use it to further their own interests. 
However, we must realize that these two things are very distinct. AMC benefiting from the industry and AMC stock price under normal circumstances when a company is doing well and is benefiting from the industry, you're obviously going to see it reflect in the stock price. And that's how you understand if a company is doing well within the industry for AMC. It's very, very different because this isn't even me making it up. Anyone can obviously take a look at this when you compare how AMC is doing. Fundamentally, you can see that they're improving when you're comparing with its competitors. So Cinemar, IMAX, or any others, you can see that they are all making new highs because of the industry. But when it comes to AMC, you have to understand two separate things. Just because it's not reflected in the stock market price, just because AMC is not making a 52-week new high, it doesn't mean it's doing bad. It's two separate things. And that's what we have to understand. A big reason for this is because they're running from the 566 because it lowers DE, but they're also now fighting Foro because of the record-setting box offers. If they go up, they risk debt reduction. Allow me to explain what this is. As we now know, shares are converted at 5,666, which is obviously debt repayment. If they stay here, they sell a lot of shares at a low price into a market that might go Dow's BOMO. Anyone who knows the fundamentals of economics? No, and specifically his debt issues are by much AMC's only drawback at the present. Short sellers are now in a very difficult position since they are aware that they will have to cope with AMC dropping depth if they allow it to drop as low as 566, which we know will go higher. As AMC increases, it will be able to extract more money from this, which will result in a healthier balance sheet due to lower interest payments and improved liquidity due to lower debt. And thus, more investments that could be made, whether it's in other different industries, new revenue streams, or even, as we've seen with $100 million in Coke machines, these are all potential free-up money that could be used, and that's what they worry about even if AMC were to go up a little. However, they are also afraid that it will remain in this area because they understand that the float is currently being B up, which means that it should be very difficult to buy shares of AMC because we've seen from the OBV that the retail have bought up the float, and they are not selling. As a result, the shares that are presently on the market are probably synthetic shares, and since the price of these shares is not increasing, they are being sold for incredibly low rates. This is a significant problem since, in addition to creating billions of shares at a low price that anyone can buy, they also have to buy back the billions of synthetic shares they produced at $1,000, $5,000, and $10,000 when they are forced to repay it and buy back these shares. Because they know that AMC is still doing well, fundamentally, even if they are unable to obtain money due to the low price, they are concerned that the price will increase, but they are also afraid that it will stay the same or possibly decline. And that's what we discussed. As you can see above, the foundations of AMC are crucial. F is accusing securities of not telling the consolidated audit about events involving tens of billions of dollars worth of stock and option orders. The effectiveness of the CAT system has already been covered, and this is not the first instance of this type of situation. That has already been observed to be fine, and they have not reported. We have anticipated this since the inception of the CAT system which aims to increase market transparency and stop OB shorts from producing synthetic alternatives. We must acknowledge that it hasn't completely removed it, but it is evident that short enterprises are experiencing problems. We are witnessing Citadel in this instance, and we have witnessed it in the past with other businesses. We now understand the limitations and challenges that short sellers encounter. We think that Cadell and other short sellers are in a very bad situation, which is why they will be struggling and paying for the pressure for a variety of reasons. Based on publicly available statistics, it was deemed to be deficient in microstrategy. We discussed how microstrategy is obviously increasing, especially now that Bitcoin has surpassed 100,000 and achieved a new all-time high of 103,000. I appreciate all of the viewers and hope to see you all again soon.